Uh, jeno, 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 yoweri, kaguta amu seven, IBS bilu unji no. Uh, misango jayo ngede, eh, kumutia ndrago ensi yona, uh, koti ensi yona ICC. Achagula uh, nise ntamu, Robert Bobwain. Ebiga eh, mbobi no, ya bita andika angabi ya kusaga, ngabira angabi ya manyo wenu, katino guja wagi data mbebala. Ya tutandike, wetuti, na katambika no, tukauli. She's, she's in charge of everything. He's willing to kill, to take lives, to stay in power. He's willing to imprison, court martial people, try civilians in military courts to keep corruption going. Like recently, he arrested children, you know, great, 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 great son, uh, grandsons and uh, granddaughters of his just because they wanted to um, participate in saying no to corruption. So we know he just doesn't want that country to develop. He just wants to like destroy everything. So what can we come up and just say, okay, at this point, let's forget what we were doing before about demanding our election victory and then hope that, oh, this time it's different. We can do the same thing we did before. And this time he's going to listen and um, leave the office of the presidency. Are we being realistic? Is that going to happen? So there are things that are still unexplained that uh, we need to clear, but from from consistency, you know, not from a point of, okay, now we are going into this. Okay, where have we come from? We need to evaluate where we have come from, what has worked, what is working, so that we keep consolidating on what is working. Okay? The previous speaker was talking about demonstrations we know those have worked it doesn't mean they don't need modifications but we are dealing with powers that we have to also keep evolving so that they feel the pinch and they respond because these people are so comfortable they are earning money they are they are they are pushing in their children and grandchildren to, you know, to have, enjoy also this stolen wealth. And they are growing and they are not flying. And now the grandchildren are also taking on and pushing away, you know, the taxpayers while squeezing them, the land that is being, you know, uh, stolen today. Some of these are just their children and grandchildren that have taken on these uh, uncouth behaviors to um, persecute society, to kill, create methods that destroy humanity so that they can take over. These processes you see in Kitezi, these people are just creating ways of making sure that they, they bring in their children, their relatives, because they are also producing and multiplying, you know? And the people they are producing also want to be like them because they also want to be extravagant. They want to spend a lot of money. They want to live lives of, you know, being on uh, uh, beaches and expensive hotels outside of the country, stealing money and investing outside the country, doing the same things their parents have participated in. You know, so they have to create for them because for them they're not going they're not going to arrest their relatives and their children and their allies. No, it's still going to be our relatives, our children, grandchildren that are going to be suffering while this grows. So are we evolving to a point where we're doing activities that are putting a check on this? So that's this human greed that has engulfed the country through Museveni 
can start falling apart. Or oh, we are still looking at these political processes as effective so that we, we put our energy to that. And then chances that these other activities we are doing will also be affected because now we'll be putting energies, dividing energies to a different different areas. So that's what was coming into my mind while I was listening to Sister Demi. Um, so if, if there's somebody out there who, you know, just has answers from the point of have we stopped demanding our election victory? Or is there a time when we are going to to stop and say, okay, now we have stopped. Let's focus on the next elections. You see that? So that the people who are, you know, still confused, but they want some form of consistency can, you know, then jump on board and we move forward. Yeah, someone else. Yes, my name Eh, we are gossiping about you, but in a good way. No, it's good. love you. Musia loves you. Musia. <laughs> and then we walk with you, and you 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 not even realize there's a boundary there. Mm -hmm. You just Demi. begin to see money mm -hmm. changing, and then you say, hey, Demi, "When a Sam, when a Samia tells you no, Lengani, just just run away." <laughs> <laughs> no, Lengani, you know. Graves are usually measured five by by what? So when the Samia tells you no, Leng, and he says, "My my, I, I, I am already a size, and I'm I'm the size of a grave now." Yes. <laughs> That's how we swear. Yes. So when, you, when I tell you no, Leng, and you will not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but but I like this arrangement. I like this kind of interaction because then um, the think tank has connections. It's not like the one which we had before that is regulated. One goes and then, you know, somebody controls it. This this is a good idea. Looks good, yeah. Mm. Uh, innovation is, uh, is, 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 is a way to go. Uh, yeah. Let me, I don't know how long we have lived in Uganda. I've lived in Uganda for 51 years. And I lived at the extreme. I lived at the lowest of the communities because I was working in the rural areas. After I lost a job in Mlago, I lost a job in Mbarai University, and then uh, I was subjected to working to places like Moroto. And in most cases, people didn't want to work with me. They called me un unemployable. So I ended up working with the communities at the worst. Now, I moved here at 51 years, and sometimes... I'm like, do I need to put in a lot of effort on Uganda? Because I know Uganda very well. I know Ugandans, especially even from my district. <laughs> it's, uh, there are times I'm like, how can we be home of cement and we're home of grass thatched houses? How can we be home of uh, iron sheets? Mm. Iron comes, iron ore comes from Tororo Stroke. And we're, we're, we, 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 we're home of grass thatched houses, mud and water. Now, I am here fishing. <laughs> that guy called Mangeni is even named because of fishing. The word Mangeni means born <laughs> associated with the fish. <laughs> so fishing is a tradition which are, <laughs> I laugh at Americans. For them, there's fish for sports. Me, I fish for eating. 
Actually, if you come to my house, you, you, might, you, might, you might think I'm a fish monger. <laughs> There's a fish almost in every... I think I need to buy a, a, a deep freezer <laughs> because I have fish. I have fish. And I only have three hooks. I go to the lake, I pick about 25, come back with them and put them in the house. I'll not buy fish anymore. So that is also a life skill. So Ugandans, it, it's, I don't know whether it is civic education that we need. It might be life skills. Because I want to say people choose the leaders they deserve. People choose the leaders they deserve. This morning I saw Ugandans walking dogs and I'm like, uh, but even don't qualify to have dogs. And I posted for them because in my neighborhood here, there's an animal clinic. Just in the neighborhood here. There's an animal clinic. And if you went there, the clinic is better than most hospitals in Uganda. And then I'm like, instead of walking for dogs, because if you see Ugandans who are walking for dogs, Ugandans are able to take streets to walk for dogs. Then I'm like, but I wish you would walk for dogs at the same time stroke for yourselves, at the same time stroke for facilities that can treat rabies. So where do you get money to walk destitution on the streets. Because when you look at the people who are walking with the dogs, the dogs look better than them. That country, me, I have now put a hope on garbage. Because the, the garbage that is sweeping that country, I, I wrote about it when I was in Uganda. When it comes to sewage, I wrote about it when I was in Uganda. I would take pictures and tell them, look at this sewage is flowing in the street. It would explain to them where algal bloom came from. You are trying to explain to people where the water hyacinth came from. You made the lake very fertile because you are pushing untreated sewage in the lake. Here, just one pipe bursts and they'll tell you stop drinking water, don't go to the pool, don't go to that until microbiologists have proved that that water is safe for swimming and they even monitor that so far we have not seen any fish dying. So maybe the water might not be very bad, but don't, don't take water without boiling until we have. Now water in the streets, in, 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 the, in the streets, you just reach a tap and drink water without fearing. So there is a crisis in Uganda of education. There's a crisis in Uganda of education because all, all health institutions, all health institutions, be it nursing, be it paramedics, even at doctor's level, we are, we are taught on sanitation, sewage disposal, water purification, housing and lighting, ventilation. These are things taught in Uganda in schools. Actually, me, I've not gone to an American school ever since I came here. I just work. The knowledge I have is from Uganda. The only difference that is what I was taught in Uganda is practical here, is what I got here. Although these people limit me, not, they don't allow me to practice what I, got, what, I, what I learned. If you taught me about housing, I've got housing here. If you taught me about garbage disposal, I got it here. Ventilation and lighting, yes, I can see ventilation here. I can see right now the temperatures are so, are so hot. Now we, we are having, we are, we are running air conditioners. But these are things we have, we have learned in Uganda. So something is just wrong. Either we became carefree. I don't know how we became carefree. So it 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 eludes me that uh, them you could be right you 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 say do civic but is it civic education? Any the other day I was telling you that I have never seen the Ugandan Constitution, but America teaches civic education beginning at eighth grade. They start at eighth grade. You sign for it, and you must learn. You must study the Constitution. So that the quality of citizenry 
the quality of citizen engagement is so high. Here, when a policeman stops even anyone, you'll hear the person saying, you're abusing my, my, my. They, they quote the constitution. They quote the constitution so much. For us, we don't know that. But it starts young. Well, I'm, I'm mentioning eighth grade because that's where they sign for it at eighth grade. Eighth grade is, I think, P7 or S1 equivalent in Uganda. So sometimes I, I, I'm like, should I stress myself? Should I stress myself? I left Uganda and I said, can I call it day? Can I call it day? You ever heard that statement from Bidan Desali? I left Uganda and I can call it day. I started a clinic which, which I think I've left to collapse because I can't sustain it. The patients themselves are too poor for me to treat them. I needed to make money, like I need to make money here and then pay salaries for people who are working in my, my clinic in Uganda. I'm like, ah, I think they are just killing people in that clinic of mine. <laughs> but they need to do it to survive. They need to do it to pay electricity, they need to do it to pay water. They need to, pay, to, to do it to, to bribe Minister of Health and those people who come to pick, to, to, to supervise. Because each time they come, they want to close you, you don't meet standards, you give them money and they go away. And it becomes their, their IGA. You know, very soon somebody from Minister of Health comes here, you need to give them maybe a, maybe a million shillings to leave me to continue practicing. So it is tough. So for me, we need a tsunami. I saw all water in Uganda is has fecal contamination. That's where we are headed. That will be good enough. Garbage is everywhere. Man, I don't know how I don't know how we can get garbage situation. What what does the garbage garbage picture in Busha look like? Because I remember then we had a lot of truck drivers, those areas. Busia and Malaba was the stench of urine was like <laughs> waraj in the air. <laughs> but, <laughs> With you, 1, remember, <laughs> you remember that uh, Busia used used to have some form of economic freedom before Busia was chalked off. Uh, revenue from the entry of the border was collected from Busia. And remember, everybody who came there, and we had so many people from from other parts of the country coming to Busia and uh, participating, doing different services uh, for um, uh, at the border, at the border there. So he came and made sure that everything ended up at URA in Kampala, so that regional. Active, monetary activity, he removed it and took it to Kampala and then brought um, uh, that uh, department of URA uh, enforcement, there's a department of enforcement, and brought soldiers there who started hunting down people who are trading in between the border. Yes. And many of them were killed. So from that time, that, that place was fairly planned. It became a ghetto. Right now, the entry at the border, the major entry to, at the border in Bosia, is, is a joke. First of all, when you're coming from uh, uh, the side of Kenya, everything you have, even if you just have a, a pass, with these ladies that have passes, it has to go through the scanner. There is no public transport in between uh, Kenya through the border. If you're coming from Kenya, you have, if you're either moving at night 
with public transport so you get to the border or you have to stop about uh, maybe two and a half miles and then walk to the border or get a border uh, a, a, a motorcycle but they call border borders to take you to immigration so you see how uh, for example if you're at the border uh, between german and uh, what's the next country there close to german so you can get a taxi from the side of german and drive into for example uh, netherlands uh, between Busia and Uganda, you can't do that. You can't get a taxi from the side of Kenya and it drops you into the border of Uganda. You can't do that. You would have to get a motorcycle. It drops you at migration and then they scan your bags. Then you pick your bags, you go to immigration and then they stamp into your passport, and then you pick your bags again, put them to the motorcycle, and then jump on a motorcycle, and then cross into Uganda. He made it so inconvenient that anybody who is traveling there gets frustrated and doesn't use that area. I don't know if I'm making sense. I was, mute. I was muted. I was muted. I was, I was muted so that you don't have. But, echo. but you see how he choked that place. If you are coming from Kenya, that is what is happening. So you either travel at night because public transport is only at night, and then the bus brings you up to the border. If you travel during day, that is what you're going to go through. Now imagine somebody who is trying to freely interact you know we are people are trying to promote um, east african free border you know activities that is by words actions dead now that place is so ghetto that if you travel during day anybody can know that this one is the traveler because you carry your bags and then you walk two miles to immigration where the scanner is and then put your bag luggage there and then they scan it now first of all the way to the scanner there's no walkway you are traveling through trucks and remember it's a one lane in one lane out it is so small so compact not user friendly at all for a place that brings in most revenue in uganda for a place that has an international road because that road connects the whole region there is just no way now when you get inside the main highway is blocked. So you have to find your way inside and come out from ahead because you have all the trailers, all the, um, the those that are, tra are, are, are carrying uh, uh, petrol. It, it is so such a fire hazard. If there was a fire there, that whole area, would be like Chitezi. If anybody lit a fire by mistake and any of those um, fuel trucks caught fire, that whole border area, including Kenya side, would be gone. And then nothing that would move because there's so much jam, the trucks are, are, are using the road because they have, don't have anywhere to park. Clearing takes forever. So that is the picture of that border area where imports and exports are coming into Uganda and going out to, to other countries.
Yeah, it's 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 to me. There's nothing that happens in Uganda that is convenient for the Ugandan, or convenient for no. somebody who has business in Uganda. Nothing. Yes, there's nothing. The government will never come up with anything that is say you know I want to <clears throat> Ugandans to thrive. It's like we yeah. are competing with you with the government, you know, mm -hmm. or competing with those that are working for the government. And that's how uh Dr. James, can you send me some fish, please? You can pack it and <laughs> dry the fish and send it over. Uh, I need to get on. I have high cholesterol and they told me I have to eat a lot of fish. So uh, by the way, shipping that Dr. fish is uh, is cheap, so he shouldn't uh, get any excuses. No, okay, it should for be like transport, please. <laughs> yeah, if you if you live from the farthest uh, uh, state, it should be at least ten dollars. Yeah, so Mr. Doctor Mugeni, that is your your assignment. He, he's, he's not saying anything. He's neither confirming nor denying. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. I just... uh, uh, this one is not for listening. <laughs> this one is for sending somebody uh, some for fish. action. It's for action, but anyways, it's, for, it's so sad. Um, it's going for back to that. Co confirming <laughs> or denying. So he, anyway, he sends is denying us, denying us fish protein. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. So uh, let's take the silence to be a yes. Yes. By the way, Mangeni, you have not told the people about how we are killed because of fish in Busha. If you ate fish so, in the bush now, so I was still, I bush, still telling you how Ugandans are, are, are suffering, how Uganda is being choked off from the rest of the world. Hmm? Now, Mr. First of Mr. All, Mangen, uh, Mr. Reggie, why don't Ugandans realize that? Because that is what that is what is missing in the minds of Ugandans is that mm. they are not realizing these things that government is is disallowing them. You know, everything you do, whether it's business, they tax you so much and you still mm -hmm. run to the government for help. You you support the government. You don't speak out, you know. So there's True. that piece that is missing but, that that we you, need to find a formula for. You see, one of the things, I mean, there are, there, there are other things, but one of the things that I see is, uh, you see, usually, now, I'm going to give a, a, an example of uh, Martin Luther, the church reformer. So he did everything right, except one. He still believed that Holy Communion and, um, and the breaking of bread was literally yeah, the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And that is what he taught. So everything else was right, except that area. Now, we are having um, the elected president, and with all due respect, he has done everything right and spoken everything right, except for me, in my opinion, number one, he has not clearly pushed for the fact that we need to isolate the people who are partnering with Museveni, not call them to our uh, functions. When they go through our streets, we stop them from going through our streets and our communities. There's this guy yesterday who said that a leader of opposition should be elected in parliament. After that function, he sat in his car and he drove through Ugandan communities. How can you say that? And Ugandan still embrace you. So we become accomplices. Mm -hmm. If Mr. we Reyes, deny uh, these guys... Comrade Regis, somebody yeah. wants to interject into your conversation. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, Comrade Mary needed to say something. Um, Okay. Before you continue, let her, let her, let her, don't, don't lose ahead. your thought, though. Don't lose your thought, please. No. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, I didn't. I just posted on, on the group, actually, that as a Catholic, that's the only thing Luther was right about. I'm sorry. I know you, you brought up religion. 
but just look up Eucharistic miracles if anyone really ever finds wants to find out the truth. So he was right about that. It's really the truly the body and blood of Christ. Anyway, let's go back to politics. <laughs> I I just had to share that. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, thank you. so should I finish my thought? Um, yes, please. But can you wrap up and we all get to ask you questions about what you just brought up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So a man like that in Guru, where we know the, there's evidence that Museveni uh, was one behind that group that they claim was Kony. And they slaughtered a lot of people. Many Ugandans were thrown into refugee camps. He goes and makes that statement that the power to elect should be got away from the op oppos uh, opposition leadership, which we all know that is the one that is standing for Ugandans in a dictatorship. He makes such a statement and he still drives safely, goes through the communities. And Ugandans, if they have functions, they call him and they embrace him. We have come to a point where we have to be desperate. But we need our leaders whose um, ideology and voices can easily be embraced to push this. And I'm challenging the elected president of Uganda, which is Robert Chagula in St. Amu, to start pushing the, for the fact that, hey, when these leaders come to your community, whether they are coming to bribe you, that is blood money. He's telling them, oh, you take the money. It's your money. No. That leader taking that money, somebody has died in hospital. So me taking that money, knowing that is corruption money, I become an accomplice. We participate in orchestration of the, uh, the, the, you know, enabling the regime to continue when we take those bribes in order to vote leaders. We need to refuse that money, first of all. Because since we started taking that money, nothing has changed. Number two, they shouldn't be crossing to our communities from anywhere. Somebody should start using rotten eggs. I'm telling you, until these guys see a danger coming close to them or they feel it, they are going to continue being greedy and you haven't done, seen anything yet. They are becoming many and they have to squeeze Ugandans in order to survive. And they continue doing that. So, um, that was... Uh, when when you ask the question about why Ugandans are, we have a culture that is ongoing that enables these leaders to survive and even enjoy their loot. Until we make them, yes, we can't stop them. They have the power, we can't stop them from looting, but we make sure they do not survive peacefully in our communities in Uganda. Thank you. Thank you so much, me, uh, Comrade Reggie. But um, me, my question is, or my thought is, um, what is we are talking about these things, but what is missing? What is really missing in our in our, the minds of Ugandans, especially the Ugandans who are now this these all these things all make sense for us who are, you know. You, you, we can come here and discuss these things, and but to a villager, somebody down there in in let's say northern Uganda, hmm? they are looking at uh, speaker Anita Mungu has built a whatever in their region. It, it, it's pride, you know. I, it's pride is the the daughter of the of the region. Hmm? is brought whatever, but is it benefiting these people? So I think something is, the thing that is missing is people not critically thinking, especially people on, on who are in, in uh, you know, who are in, in the impacted people. Because if you don't critically think that, okay, 
like for example, a regional sitting, like for example, um, led to the opposition, uh, be, uh, let their let um let uh they have to now vote for the opposition leader. These things don't make sense to somebody who's average, you know, an average Ugandan. They don't make sense. They are going to make sense to us because we know why. Because believe me, this time, I don't know how what plans they have for the elections, but this time. I think the, we all have to work to make sure that the people we put in positions are people who are really grounded, who can stand their ground and say no to this corruption thing. Can However, I ask you a question? But we can also understand that all these people who are not going to be elected, they are going to be, money is going to be put in so that they can compete with these people. So that is where we are going. But how have can we Can I ask you a and, question? Mm-hmm. So yes, of course, I I I I I, I agree with you that um, the thought processes of Ugandans are still lacking in that area. They can easily be deceived into thinking that they benefit when when uh, somebody is looting from their pockets. Yes, but we are also um, you're also suggesting. And which I also believe that there has to be a way to make sure that these people's thought process is not the one that works against them. Correct, correct. But imagine, okay, if we were all preaching the fact that, look, these people are your enemies. These people are enemies. We are what we are because of their greed. Do not allow them to cross back to your communities. If we are preaching the same thing, do you think Ugandans would refuse to respond? If they understand, like if you go down on the grass, like so I think... Um... Uh, Comrade Mary put something there. We need people to go down on the ground and and teach, and literally, um, uh, Comrade Demi was talking about this that our next campaign should be about teaching people civically, but also teaching them oh, critical mind, critical thinking. Mean means to me in my own little um thinking means that if you're going to come and ask me to vote for you. I'm also, I, I have to also ask for something that can make me or entice me to vote for you. I have to weigh, if I give you my vote, I'm giving you five years of election, how much are you going to get and how much are you giving me? So that is the kind of thing that our people need. What are you getting in return for that? Because if they understand, right now they don't understand, they give you 4,000 shillings and you, you just give away, your, 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 you sign away your voting rights, you know? But if you can wait and you say, nah, you know what, I'm giving you five, you're going to get billions, you know? Allowances, this, salary, all that stuff. But you're giving me only 4,000, at least you build a school. So if our the level of Ugandans can get to that level, and to, okay, if you you're telling me that you want me to vote for you, I want something now. Don't tell me when you're in office. I want something done now because when you get in office, you're not going to do something, anything. So to me, that is the level of thinking where we have to get all Ugandans. Ugandans. Yes, us here, we can think and say, mm -hmm, we know where that is going, voting uh, an opposition. It, it's kind of, if you look at it, it's really also going back to voting for the president. <laughs> the same thing, you know, voting for the president, in, uh, MPs voting for the president. It's the, kind of the same thing, you know, that, that they are trying to arrive with. They are trying to cut, back, mm -hmm. cut the power of the opposition because they've had problems, you know? And that's what exactly they are, they are heading to. 
But to an average Uganda, they don't see that. You know, Tebachilaba, they don't see it. An average Uganda doesn't understand why they don't, why an MP cannot vote for the, whatever MPs can't vote for the opposition leader. They don't see it. But it's going to work. It's going to work for us. It's going to work um, for, for all Ugandans if the grassroots are educated more. Not just understanding the constitution, but also weighing things. You tell me this, do this, do this for me. Uh, come and attend. Let them. How are we going to promote civic? Uh, I mean, disobedience. Let them not turn up from these occasions. If they don't turn up for these for these things that they are putting together, then we we are sending a message. But as long as they are still when you these people go into these regions and they are still meeting in large numbers it's not making a difference hi sis sis i would like to interject doc is here um we we haven't forgotten i know it's chimeza it's not zoom as normal or usual but still we'll take that time to remind of ourselves, our brothers and sisters that have departed. So I will share on screen just a few, you know, there's so many thousands and thousands of brothers and sisters that have gone to their graves early. And also in our midst, we have our comrade uh, Maiga that was with us last week talking about his, um, the or the horrific or the horror stories of uh prison and uh, not even stories the the what he had to endure so hopefully uh we should hear from you sister mimi because i know you wanted to share something on prison maybe you'll do that after a moment of silence and then uh those other people that want the mic can come in, then we close. Yes, uh, so let's have a moment of silence, guys. You know you all have your mic uh, unmuted, so try not to make noise for a minute. Uh, thank you. I'll play this. It starts with our comrade Ziggy Wine. May their souls rest in peace. Uh, thank you so much, uh, brothers and sisters, for observing that moment of silence. So kind of you. Thank you. Uh, yes, it is um, to to keep us uh, reminded, you know, uh, that our country is not safe. And that is why we are on this Zoom. No one is safe. Let us continue to speak. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere yes um for those that are joining us for the first time we usually have an online uh, protest every saturday 2 p.m uk time yes today um it's still continue to amplify sound and contact us on how you can be the only one speaking but um you can just briefly. Um... I'm gonna briefly go over what I had from this space. It was um I I left with a mixed mind of wanting to understand what exactly Ugandans want and what exactly Ugandans need to do and what exactly what we need to do. That's how I came out of that space. They were talking mm -hmm. about prisoners, prison, uh, a prison, uh, the life in prison. So, uh, in prison. Um, 
prison, uh, it's kind of complex. I really liked, there was a one Nalongo Nana, uh, I liked her proposals of what, uh, that people need to visit more these prisons and hear stories from the prisoners themselves. Um, and I know one of our own, uh, Mr. Maiga is also, I don't know if he's still here, but I had this horrified, where prisoners are forced to work on farms of these people, these big people in our country who own those large farms. So it got me thinking and I'm saying, oh, that's why they are really getting, trying to imprison as many more people to work on these farms. Because remember these farms, now people are into that trend of agriculture. So agriculture right now, they are buying these load farms and doing because they need to export things outside because now it's a yeah. trend. So the, now it got me thinking that that is the reason why they are. He went and paid the prisons. So the deal was he gives the prisoners lunch and then pays um, the prison uh, money so they come and work. So they came and worked the whole week from six to six. For lunch. I saw that. Go ahead. So you, this kind of so who regulates that? Who regulates? Because you can't hear like Comrade Regia said. You make someone work from six to six for lunch. Do they get rests? Does anybody? So I'm like, but. Interestingly, there is also business going in in the prison itself with the prisoners. There are these, so there are hierarchies in pre prisoners among prisoners. There are those who are now there are those that work for these bakurus. I call them bakurus. So they they are inside there in prison. They are carrying out their sentences, but they work for them, and they run kind of this business as uh, work among themselves. And then I also had something about there are some rich prisoners. There are those people in kind of like authority there. In they they decide. In fact, whether you also live or live, they can decide in two months. I don't. That one is making a lot of noise. In two months, you will get out. Prisoners. So all these things that are going on. And then also I had another lie that they, sell, you, know, you know, they make them to do these crafts and then they also make them do furniture. Yeah. But this first thing, they are not paid for that furniture. Secondly, they lie to people who are like going in to buy these things that he, the, this work is supporting the widows. That is for these vacuums inside there inside the prison system who, who who are associating with the prison system. So, and I'm wondering why can't these people, okay, if you cannot pay the, these prisoners money, why don't you put that money back into the prisons so that they can have better places, better things of uh, places to sleep. Then also the pregnant women are made to chop wood. Imagine you're pregnant and then you're starting to chop and you have to chop, they give you a bunch of whatever and you chop. So all these things is going on, but then something that really puzzled me is that with so complex, you cannot change that system over because the, the, the prisoners are benefiting from them. I understand that they get money, they are given money, paid money to some of those prisoners, and that is, by the way, in violation. Because if you, you're a prisoner, yes, there's like I was reading somewhere and I say, yes, these people can be compensated, but they can be put, like they, they pay you some money, but it goes on your account. When you come out, that is, that money is paid to you. Evangelian uh, and when you get out of free prison for those who are going to be free, or oh, it goes into your account, then you can get these extra little things. But if these people are using these prisoners for free and somebody else is benefiting, that is so wrong, and that is something we want, we really need to talk about. Apart from freeing our comrades, our political prisoners, but we need to also go in, we need to get an MP who can bring and try to get 
to know how this system is working in Dagua because it's beyond that. If they cannot give them better conditions, then if they are working late that money, where is it even reported on the revenues of prison? That is something also we need to find out. I'm thinking people need Okulabisa. So mm. I came out so disappointed and grieved and and it I came out in that space like it was like a kind of like I was feeling like the consensus is we cannot do anything about the prison system right now. It's so complicated. That's all I Sister have. Mimi. Sister Mimi. Yes. Um just a small interjection. You 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 one of um uh, the topics that you 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 have mentioned uh, what was on your mind um you talked about um wh where are Ugandans are at this time but you see I go there and when I go there I try to put myself in a position um on on ground to identify with Ugandans. But you see, the dictator has put Ugandans in a position where their mind is on surviving that day, to get what to eat that day. Ugandans depend on farming. So one of the things I did, I was like, mm, let me do some farming, and I see the possibility that I am able to sell some crop but I failed I planted um, two acres of cassava let me break down for you how much I used uh, preparing the land I used 200,000 which is roughly maybe $65 that is preparing the land Tilling the land, I used about uh, fifty dollars, which might be about a hundred and sixty. Buying the cassava stain, I used about maybe thirty dollars. Let's say a hundred thousand. Okay, so I'm already in about uh, five hundred fifty thousand. It's about a hundred and uh, maybe forty dollars. Now, planting, I had to pay about uh, uh, another $40 planting the two acres. So that is already uh, about $200, which is uh, probably 600000 Yeah. Now, weeding, you weed at least three times before that cassava is ready. It takes about um, 11 to 12 months for cassava to be ready. So just taking care of the garden, I used about, about 300,000. So that is about 800,000. Yeah? Now, harvesting, I used about 200,000, harvesting everything. So, two acres of, of, of cassava altogether was like $250, which is coming to almost a million shillings. When we harvested the, the two acres, we, we got about three and a half sacks. Each sack is $40. There is market outside Uganda, but Museven has chalked it. He has made sure certain people control the selling. So how much money did I lose? I will tell you how much money I lost. I lost 750,000 Uganda shillings, which is about maybe 200 or $180. So that is what a farmer is going through. So at this point, what are they doing? Growing food to eat. Are they educating their children? 
Now, do you feel? I had to feel that to understand what a normal Uganda is going through. How many Ugandans are depending on agriculture? Now, that is cassava, which is one of the simplest things to deal with. When you harvest, it is easy to deal with. Actually, I decided I was like, no, since this cassava, we have harvested it and is still in a primary form, let's do some value addition. I got people, I paid them, they peeled it and dried it using the sun. When we tried to sell it, the price didn't change, even with value addition. Somebody just needed to take it to a grinder and make grain, uh, um, uh, meal. So now you feel what a Ugandan is going through. Now you're going to go to that Ugandan and start telling them what. So at that point, they have tried to push, they have sold their land to grow that cassava. In that process, you come with 5,000 shillings. They are looking at the money because their brain I know. Is, yeah. is at that point. Yeah. Back it, to your memory. I know it is. Um, the situation in Uganda, oh my God, one shouldn't sleep. Uh, guys, please, um, the mic, you should all be able to unmute and, and step in. Um, or do you want me to just call out um, randomly? Sister Demi, we have heard from you. Yeah, you call out. <laughs> Comrade Eddie, we haven't heard from you. Uh, Comrade Ellen Prezo, how are you? Good to see you. How are you doing, brother? Everyone should be able to unmute. Um, today, yeah, he says you guys can unmute any time. Comrade LM, are you able to speak to us? Comrade Maiga, yes, you want uh, to Doctor, speak? let me speak. I want to say something before I, before I leave the house. Yes, please. Uh, Docas, for me, this argument that uh, the grassroots doesn't sound relevant for me. We have a population of, of about 120,000 Ugandans in the US. The push to go home should be stronger here. You don't see that. One of the reasons when I, when I came to the US, I became very active thinking uh, I had brought a situation from home because I was on the ground. Me, I was in Uganda. That's why I'm saying I, I lived in Uganda for 51 years. So I came this burning and Ugandans who are here just cooled me down. And there was this business, Yani, Akatu, Katana Chamani, and I'm like, no, it's not Katana Chamani. I came back with this. I came burning. I'm like, where do I get these people so that we combine and go back home? There should be a push here to go home than the other people. For me, I'm talking about a Ugandan who is disabled. I have worked in Uganda. I went to Moroto. I'm the one who tried to bring a picture out of Moroto. They were destroyed by, by Guti. Guti, I, I, then I had a camera. I didn't have a phone. I had a camera. And they destroyed my memory card. I was recording Kato Rastling. Because the unstock unit from Karamoja would get cows, and as we go to Kampala, the elites from Karamoja would transport those cows along with us. And I had recorded those things. So Guti destroyed my camera. And then I worked in the rural communities, real rural communities. Mangenevukana, you know that place called Evukana? It's down yeah. in Najanji. I know. It. I worked in Matsaf. I worked in. Deep in Padola, West Budama, those villagers, rural villagers. If you have seen a Twitter, I have just made thanking Balam Baruga because they were in Toronto. I said, Thank you for bringing t shirts for our people. At least they'll have something to put on during Christmas. Because they were they were thanking people that they were welcome. And if you see Tororo, they are colored in yellow. And I'm like, thank you for bringing t-shirts because that's what I understand. That's what I know. Our people will be grateful for those t-shirts. People walk naked. So when you bring them a t-shirt, they jump. They, they are happy. So changing these people, 
if you who has gone to school like me is not changed, how do you expect this rural person? Me, I know them because you teach them, you are teaching about HIV, and the people you are treating under trees will even tell you nowadays we are swallowing medicine because of seven. They even don't they don't connect they are swallowing medicine with HIV AIDS with the with the with the promiscuity or having got infected. For them, they said they praise Museven for her. At least now we have medicine under trees. That's what people are. So you do get annoyed and say, but why do we treat these people? Why do I even serve you? Sometimes I'm like, some of you deserve to die because there's no reason why you should be promoted to live the next day. So we who are here, we who are in the diaspora, there should be more push. How are you going back that in that Uganda if you can't change it from here? You should have enough capacity like the Sudanese. Like the Sudanese. No. The revolution in Sudan was led by people from the diaspora almost. The diaspora that is here, when I arrived here, as quickly conscripted into Yuna. And they just destroyed what I was until I have decided to just break off and I want to be myself. I can go to, to, to state capital, talk to my house rep, myself, minus involving anyone. But if we have to go back home, People stop looking at it. those people there, their money, this poverty is a resource. Poverty is celebrated. I'm speaking what I know. I know of a home where they're eating salt and cassava from here. I sometimes tell even DC members of parliament that tell me where I come from and I tell you somebody who has HIV in your, in your compound. So Museveni disabled these people that they are only a voter bank. A voter bank, they come to vote and they go away. Somebody who is, you have seen that person in T-shirt with a bicycle and the bums are, are, are like for baboon, exposed. What do you want to teach that person? They have no hope. They have no future. They will not even think of anything because for them, a merialero is finished. That's why even when they are buried in Chites, they will not even connect it with the failure of government. They can't. Instead, they will say, to serve a government, to Yambe. To change people, not to say, to serve a government, they to change people, to say, we fight government. These people are totally centuries, 300 years behind us. For me, sometimes I would go out to work, and end up crying with the people I've gone to see. So how do we take advantage of, of our exposure? That's the question we should be answering. How do we take advantage of our exposure? I have come to this small country that has 947 cities, it's called Iowa. It has a population of 3.1 million people. It has 50 hospitals that carry out surgeries. In Uganda, you have doctors kneeling before Museveni. Museven, who is a patient? Doctors kneel. Tata, come out. So, then you want to teach your ledo civic education? Seven years in medicine. Three years at master's. He needs ah. from seven. Uh, he needs from seven. Please, William, can you stop there and interject? Please. I think Stop. our problem is not understanding. Where are the people they come from? You were a doctor, I'm a medical personnel. When you are coming for the world round, you need the cleaners, the wood, the world to be clean. You need the nurses, you need the psychologist, you need the physio. You don't need your medical model that you're going to give people tablets and injection. So civil education has got a place in everything you want to do business everywhere you got to learn the trade we are not going to open up schools to teach people come and you learn this there is a way of approach you a doctor think about public health health education is a big 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 principal element to deliver the message but you people the more you push people like us that we don't have productive ideas, you're gonna be in opposition for the rest of your life because we are trying to put the peace together. It's not going to be put together with the radical views like you are. If I could tell my brother who has owned, 
that somebody who brought it the proposal for lead of opposition should be whatever, whatever. That is body radicalism. You need to research. You need to think about what is going on in Uganda. That proposal was brought by, by Segona in two, 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 2018. It was proposed by numbers. Eh? We cannot go radical like that, I'm telling you. There is a way we're gonna need the radicalism which works, which is effective. That if we are uprising, we're gonna be body radicals. We're gonna get the police off the road, that is body radicalism. We're gonna eat everybody's food, that is body radicalism. But in a way it is effective. But if we continue to be like a civil education, does not have a place. It does have a place. If you are in America, civil education plays a part. I know in Uganda, people, they are very poor, but I know there are problems, but are we go? is it a single bullet that you dismiss civil education? People in Uganda, they don't know who to vote. Let me give you an example, William. People in Uganda, they will say, I voted for Bobby Wine as the president, but I vote an MP who is NRM. That is where we need to tell people simple education. For you, you are worried we're going to sit in the class with the pen, with the books, like Rumbuye is telling you, teacher, get ready with your pens. No, that is not what, we, what I'm talking about. We need to explain to people, you are going for election, yes. It is important you vote Bobby Wine as the president, you vote that member of parliament to support his views, to support his views, to support push him his, his plan, his policies. But the more for me, I'm just looking, I've just said in beginning time, next year, this time we are going to be looking at presidential candidates. I don't understand why you are dodging away from these topics and you want to go radical, 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 hitting, hitting, do this, kill this one, insult this, somebody doesn't have, we are all Ugandans. We're going to be in Uganda, one way or the other. Hmm? But we need, that's what I'm saying. That was my last point, William. I want you to go back and listen to that. I said, let us put together the ideas of moderate and the radicals together. Moderate and the radicals together. Then in a way we can find, even if my king says, unite, 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 unite. You might dismiss my idea for me, I'm happy. This is why sometimes for me now, I'm like, I'm not coming on some what. Because ideas you say people, they don't value, they don't see it. Even if they don't know, they don't take time to know. What is he talking about? We cannot dismiss civil education. We are not going to open up schools. We are not inviting people to come out with one. But there is some what of enlightenment. Like yesterday, they asked Honare Bonsamba, has there ever been regional sitting in Uganda? He said he doesn't know, member of parliament. And me, ordinary person, I went and I researched and I find out we had a sitting in Massacre. So we cannot be like that. We are not calling people to come and have degree, diploma, but civil education, very simple. Very simple. This color, what does it mean? What does it mean to care to vote a leader who is going to take you, who is going to argue with him seven? We are missing the board. We don't want political arguments, which is productive. We want, just want to go our side, para, para, para. I'm sorry, for me, I'm not going to be that side. I'm sorry, people. I don't want, I don't want to be uh, like that. For me, I know politics is about you engage, you interact, you bring your ideas together. But the radicalism of dismissing, dismissing, I'm going to ban so and so. So and so should not work. No, for me, I work in the court. So, sometimes I do so many jobs. We even a murderer has got people who defend him. Mm. Who stand up with, with them? But for us, we are like put them in the fire and hang them up. We are not going to win people. 
We are not uh, going to uh, uh, Demi, Demi, I can agree with you on civic education because Museven basically that's what he has done in Chang Kwanzi. Uh, in Songa, the Gwanga Yafe, a Gambo Vizu. Turina, Bana Uganda, and Afe, not Manche to Agala, or Rus Tumwa Katengo, or Rus Sikatengo, Nganae Ketmanche to Agala. Wabu Mlama Guligum, Kokanga to Joga of Mentia Genome Seven, to Jacob to Tia, to Tia, to Inoxiganga Fina to Sachimu, Edanga to Tunu de Mukubodim. What were and to Wanja because of Genome Seven, or to Jacumanama, or to disorganizing, or to the Mabega. Uye asgalenga ateka yon njaba lafe nga tuwe notuwe kubanga na fefeka na feka Wata mtu tuna kubawa budi Tuna kubale kabone wako lewi yao Kwa temba wawwe Nyo sigala kukos Nyo sigala kumulimuguli Kukogu wa genome 7 Paka tuna mtu usano tuwe taga Uwe nga lafe rija kutelera Nyo tuta kule echo Nyo tuwe jatu zivuali la ino Kwa tuna usigala fena Tu search munga wako yege Adifena nga tu shooting of direction ye Oya tu vaka kola ama nyanga nyanga Nyo tu muleka Nyo sigala kukos Obuta wa diverted Obuta wa kumula Mwagulo mkuru, mtu joku tereo, mtu joku tukaye ujitu wagala. Mbagala nyo, mwaka 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 m